Welcome to this tutorial about Grass Valley Channel Composer. In this tutorial we'll go over the creation of a clip title template with a dynamically scaling text field where text can be filled in and the text field will automatically resize to the size of the amount of text filled in. In this template we'll have to use a lot of controllers and alter a lot of settings for this clip title. So we'll just start off with a new template and name it dynamic clip title in and we'll first start by adding a new plane for our background in this case it could be a gradient plane or a normal plane let's take a normal plane in this case and the moment we do not have to alter anything on this plane since uh, the alteration is going to be taken from the text box so we have a background for our dynamic text as well which scales along with the text box and we will add a text field to the stage as well. Now when I double click on the Grass Valley text box, what I will get is the options and on the bottom of these options over here there is an option called Auto Adjust Side to Contents. As soon as I click that, my text box will resize to the amount of text filled in. And of course I can change my font size Although you will see now that the text box is not being scaled correctly, this is because my text frame width and height are currently set as a maximum value the text box can grow to. So if I increase the size, I will have a, a text box with my text fully visible. Then the next step is of course to add a scene parameter to this text box. I'll just pick my title scene parameter from the list. And the next step is to add a controller to this text box. In this case, we will have to add an anchor controller since we don't want to scale our text box from the middle position, of course. Because if I add some text now, my text box will grow from the center. And of course, usually I want to have it growing from the top left position. So to do this, I will have to add an anchor controller. So I right click on my text box, press add controller and I'll add an anchor controller. Uh, in this case my anchor point position can be left untouched since eventually this will be taken over inside a group. The only thing I have to set in this case is my align to X and align to Y to left and top. And I will have to do the same thing for my plane since my plane will have to grow from the top left position as well. And align that to left and top as well. Now the only thing left is to create a link between the size of my text box and my plane on the back. So in order to do that I have to select my plane and add a link controller which will link to the width or the height of my text box. I will have to add two link controllers of course since the first has to link to the width and the second one has to link to the height. So I'll remain this link controller to make it more clear what it is used for. So I'll rename this to width and then I will have to choose a source object in this case that's going to be my text box. I will have to select a source property in this case my width and a target property which is going to be width as well. Um, the current values are basically okay I can change my maximum value but a maximum value of 1000 should be enough and I will have to add another controller as well for my height. So again I will select the link controller, rename it to height and from the source object select my text. For the source property I will select my height, for my target property I will select my height and the rest can be left untouched. And all I have to do now is select both objects on the stage and press G on my keyboard which will group both objects together and as you can see it will resize my background to the text size on the foreground. Of course my group is kind of weirdly shaped. This is because my group is still going to align from the middle position so my anchor point is currently over here at this position. Um, this doesn't really matter since the rest of my group is transparent anyway so I just have to make sure I take this into account when positioning my text box. So now when I 
reduce the amount of text filled in, my text box will automatically resize and the playing on the back along with it. Of course it will be resizing from the top left. So even if I fill in a new line and enter some new text, I will get a new line and everything will resize as well. For a nice touch you can add a border around the text box uh, with the background. In order to do this we have to alter a few settings. We have to alter our anchor point and our link controllers. So let's say I want to have a border of 10 pixels. I will have to set my offset to minus 10 and this offset as well which will give you this result. And of course I will have to do the same thing for my link controller since it's now being shifted uh, in the top left position. So for my height I will have to create an offset, in this case not of 10 but 20 of course since it's already 10 pixels moved to the top. So if I set this to an offset of 20 and set my width to an offset of 20 as well, I will have a border created of 10 pixels around my text box. And now of course I can add an animation to this clip title if I want to do this. I will have to do that on the group to make it a lot easier to move and of course also because of my anchor points since my anchor points are stored over here so I cannot move these two objects within the group without setting my anchor point. In the group of course this is not required so in the group I can add a movement animation. And I have a simple animation created for my clip title as well. Now again to create your out clip title it's just as easy as clicking the duplicate template button, renaming my dynamic clip title in to clip title out, then pressing the select all timeline items, going to tools, reverse keyframes and enabling an outpoint. 